Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I hope I'm audible. <clears throat> Am I audible, students? You can hear me. Okay. Good morning. Very soon. Good morning. Okay, so I got late a little bit. I reached college late actually, that's why okay. Okay, so last class, <coughs> what we did, we are a little bit unwell, okay, so uh, I will go a little bit slow, okay. Okay, <coughs> let me share my screen. Okay, so uh, last class we have done up to your uh, like skimming tank and that reader's tank we have uh, completed, right? <clears throat> so that was your primary treatment, okay? So that was what your primary treatment and after your primary treatment what we have studied there is your pre preliminary treatment, okay? So in the preliminary treatment uh, uh, you, uh, you can say that sedimentation it is there, okay? So, uh, like sedimentation, uh, you have already uh, discussed about sedimentation in the, uh, in your uh, this uh, water raw water engineering, right? We have already already discussed in there, and the function of the sedimentation process is as similar as like your water treatment plant. Okay, everything is same. So there, what we have studied is that <clears throat> like. Uh, sedimentation uh, what happens uh, like in screening and uh, like uh, in your this uh, uh, in screening okay all the floating matters that we, we separate isn't it the floating materials it gets separated then after here uh, sedimentation we have uh, we have grid chambers okay so the <clears throat> So the this uh, suspended materials or the creeds, okay, which are a little bit heavy, so they get uh, you know settled there in your creed chamber. So like in sedimentation, why it is done? Because like uh, the materials, okay, those are neither very heavy or they are neither very like they are they doesn't float uh, like the, in the spinning process. The those uh, floating materials that cannot be get trapped, okay. So all those. Uh, materials you can say or suspended materials they are being uh, separated in the sedimentation process okay so here also similarly like uh, in your raw water engineering we have studied like we keep it for uh, like uh, for a certain period of time for a detention period and after that the materials they get uh, settled automatically isn't it here also like similar it is there and also uh, like the shape and uh, size of the <coughs> materials they you know they uh, it can be changed okay the shape and the size of the materials or the materials it can be uh, changed by using some uh, you can say chemicals and those chemicals are known as your coagulants as we already learned in our raw water engineering okay so <clears throat> let us see here let us read it read it a bit okay so you see here, as discussed in the previous pages, the screens and the grid chambers do remove most of the floating materials like paper, rags, cloth, okay, etc. and the heavy inorganic settleable solids and the sewage. However, a part of the suspended solids which are too heavy to be uh, <coughs> removed as floating materials and too light to be removed as by grid chambers, 
uh, they can are generally removed by the sedimentation tank. So I think up to here it is clear to you. Okay, so whatever organic solids, uh, those are very heavy. Okay, that uh, to be removed by the grid chamber and those uh, and uh, you know like uh, those settleable solids uh, those cannot be uh, removed by the this screening process so those are generally removed by your sedimentation tanks okay so <clears throat> you see the sedimentation tanks are thus designed to remove a part of the organic matter from the sewage effluent coming out from the grid chamber so whatever effluent is coming out from the grid chamber that day i showed you one video so you have seen there that the wastewater it first goes through the screening and after screening it goes to the grid chambers so after grid chambers it uh, moves to the sedimentation tank okay <clears throat> Okay, so <coughs> so after that, those effluents they go through the uh, this sedimentation. They enters the sedimentation tanks, and you know, like those uh, these sedimentation tanks, they are designed to remove those organic matter that is coming from the uh, grid chambers. Okay, so like uh, here in the you see here in the complete sewage treatment the sedimentation is carried out twice okay so this sedimentation process it is carried out twice one is when the uh, before the biological treatment is done that is your primary sedimentation is done okay before that it is once that carried out and one is carried out after the your <coughs> biological treatment or you can say after the secondary treatment or secondary sedimentation Okay, so this, uh, uh, when these chemical coagulants, they are used for flocculating the organic matter, okay, during the process of sedimentation, as I already said that the materials, the shape and size of the materials, it can be, it can be changed, okay, by what? By using a chemical and those are known as your sedimentation aided with coagulation. Uh, this one already we have discussed in your raw water engineering. Okay, so here also similar it is the process is there and also <clears throat> there are you know in wastewater engineering there are certain uh, treatment units or you can say certain sewage treatment units uh, uh, those work on the principle of sedimentation. Okay, so what are those treatment units? One is your like septic tanks. Okay, septic tanks everyone knows. One is your Imhoff tank. Okay, you see here septic tank, Imhoff tanks it will come later. Okay. So this, uh, uh, these two septic tanks and impuff tanks and many others are there. They work on the principle of your sedimentation process. Okay. So now let's see the next one. <coughs> so basically you will see. Um, Let's read this one. <clears throat> okay, it's here written here, you see. The size and shape of the particles, it can be altered by the addition of certain chemicals in water. Okay, so these chemicals are called coagulants. Okay, and they make the sedimentation it quite effective, leading to the settlement even, even very fine and colloidal particles. So if you uh, mix the chemicals uh, in the, to, with the, this uh, matters or material, so what will happen? Those lighter materials, it will become a little bit heavy. And when it becomes heavy, so that material, it will settle down isn't it so that that makes uh, the uh, sedimentation process quite effective okay so because uh, settlement is happening settlement of very fine particles are happening so that's why so <clears throat> next is your okay so next you see the capacity the capacity and other dimensions okay the capacity, oh no, 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 wait, so you read it from here. Sedimentation basins are thus designed for affecting settlement of particles by reducing the flow velocity or by detaining the sewage in them. So, these sedimentation basins, <coughs> they are designed, okay, 
they are designed so that it affects the settlement of the particles what what it does it reduces the flow velocity okay it reduces the flow velocity or, or it also detains the sewage in them okay and so the sedimentation basins they are made up of what they are made up of reinforced concrete okay or they can be rectangular or circular in shape okay and this long narrow rectangular tanks uh, with horizontal flow are generally preferred so uh, there are since there are two one is your rectangular and the other one is a circular but the rectangular tanks with horizontal flow they are generally more preferred than the circular tanks okay so <clears throat> next is your like the capacity and other dimensions of the tank it should be properly designed obviously we will go through the design problem okay so the uh, capacity and the other dimensions of the tank it should be properly designed <coughs> and also okay a plain sedimentation tank okay under normal conditions it removes about what 60 to 65 percent of the suspended solids you can you have you can remember this slide okay it uh, sedimentation tank under normal conditions how much of suspended solids removed it removes 60 to 65 percent of the suspended solids and 30 to 35 percent of the bod from the sewage okay this line is important <clears throat> so it removes 30 to 35 percent of the bod from the sewage so basically this is the diagram of your rectangular sedimentation tank and this is a circular sedimentation tank so we have discussed <coughs> the sedimentation tank so uh, let me show you one uh, i have searched one video uh, regarding your sedimentation so you first see uh, see that video i think if you see then you will be getting some idea okay so you first see that video after that we will again continue okay <clears throat> you see this video and here and here we have a rectangular sedimentation basin with its influent zone so the first zone of a rectangular sedimentation basin is the influent zone, and this is where water enters the tank. As the water moves through the tank, it enters the settling zone, and this is where the settling takes place of the particles that will settle out. And at the end of the basin is the effluent zone, and this is where the water leaves the basin. And on the bottom, we have the sludge zone. The sludge zone is where the settled solids collect. So these are the four main zones of a conventional sedimentation basin, whether it's rectangular or circular. The influent zone, the settling zone, the effluent zone, and the sludge zone. And here we can see that there's the sludge collectors moving the sludge to the influent end of this rectangular clarifier for processing. Here we have pictured a round clarifier or a circular clarifier. The water comes in the influent into the center stilling well. This is the influent zone. The water then leaves the stilling well and moves outward through the settling zone. As the settleable Particles settle out, they enter the sludge zone down at the bottom of the clarifier, and the outer edges make up the effluent zone. On a circular clarifier, the effluent weir goes around the entire circumference of the clarifier, and that is the effluent zone. Did you hear or you can you, there is a problem? You couldn't see the video or you can, uh, couldn't hear it? When the video is not playing. <clears throat> okay. 
okay from my side it's a uh, play okay to others i don't know others did you uh, did you watch the video could you watch the video or could you hear <clears throat> other than potato everybody can hear or watch okay okay to i think there might be some network issue okay no problem you can search this video in youtube also okay you can see it from there okay fine good okay then uh, i think you have uh, seen it right now uh, then now you could make it make it an idea how is the this uh, rectangular or circular sedimentation tank is uh, working okay so that's why i have showed if uh, if i could show you some videos then it it uh, goes to your mind isn't it so that's why okay <clears throat> so next is your okay next is your like uh, types of sedimentation tanks okay so there are sedimentation tanks according to shape we have uh, learned that there is your rectangular and circular tanks we have learned okay but now uh, said according to the function okay according to the function sedimentation tanks it can be either intermittent or it can be continuous okay so let's see what is intermittent and what is continuous so you see here <coughs> the intermittent settling tanks are called quiescent type tanks okay it is also known as your quiescent type tanks are simple settling tanks which store sewage for a certain period and keep it in complete rest so after uh, so this tanks this intermittent tanks what it does it gives the sewage or it stores the sewage for a certain period and it keeps it in complete rest okay so after giving it a rest of about 24 hours so that like i already told that in sedimentation we keep it for a detention period 24 hours so after give it, uh, giving it a rest of about 24 hours okay during which the suspended particles it uh, already settles down to the bottom of the tank okay so <clears throat> The cleaner sewage, okay, the cleaner sewage from the top, it may be drawn off and the tank, it can be cleaned off, okay. So, uh, now the tank is again filled with raw sewage to continue the next operation. So, <clears throat> did you understand this? Like uh, this sewage, it is captured for 24 hours, okay. So, in that 24 hours, what happens? Does the sewage with the particles, it settles down okay to the bottom of the tank and what happens to the cleaner sewage it it may be it, it is at the top of the this uh, tank and it may be drawn off okay and after that the tank it can be cleaned and it can be used um, you know like uh, uh, again filled with raw sewage and it can be the next operation can be continued okay <clears throat> so that is your like intermittent tanks okay intermittent tanks uh, and what is a continuous uh, flow type of the sedimentation tank you see here uh, like in a continuous flow type of sedimentation tank okay which is generally used in modern days modern days that means nowadays okay it's a modern time so the flow velocity it is it is only reduced okay the flow velocity is only reduced and the sewage it is not brought to complete rest as it is done in a intermittent type so here the sewage it is not brought to complete rest okay it is not given complete rest as it is done in the intermittent time <clears throat> so the working of such a tank it is a very simple as the water enters from one end and comes out from the other end okay so the water it is going uh, going through the tank from one end and it comes out through the other end so the velocity it is sufficiently reduced by providing sufficient length of travel so here the velocity of the flow it is like it is uh, reduced okay how it is reduced it is reduced by providing sufficient length of travel that means the length is increased <coughs> okay so now uh, this type of uh, it is known as your continuous type okay so you have understood the difference between the intermittent and the continuous flow type of sedimentation tank 
okay so now next <coughs> next let us see what is there okay so this is a <coughs> design so now we will be solving one design problem okay one design problem we will be solving but for that we need to know uh, that uh, you need to know certain formulas okay <coughs> so you have to remember certain formulas like what is what will be v okay v formula then again uh, then again you have to remember uh, like uh, what is the settling velocity formula okay this one is your settling velocity formula so all these things you have to remember and certain <coughs> conditions are also given okay certain conditions are also given then again detention time uh, formula is also there for rectangular tank and for circular tank both the detention time formula is different okay so these two are the uh, detention time formulas then again uh, like the effective depth is also given what is the effective depth is 2.2 to 3.6 so uh, like everything the ever overflow rates okay it is between 40 to 50 thousand so everything is written okay how to design your uh, for designing a problem so what what things you will be needed so everything is written here okay so you need to go through <coughs> this okay you need to go through this before solving your uh, a numerical problem but now let me uh, continue with the numerical problem later you can go through all this okay okay so let's uh, see this one numerical okay let us see this numerical uh, design a suitable rectangular sedimentation tank for treating the sewage from a city, okay, provided with an assured public water supply system with a maximum daily demand of 12 million liters per day. So what is the MDD? Maximum daily demand is provided as your 12 million liters per day. So assume suitable values of retention period and velocity of flow in the tank. Make any other, other assumptions whenever, wherever needed, okay. So here <clears throat> they have assumed, okay, in this question, they have assumed that 80% of the water, it is supplied to the city, okay, 80% of the water that is supplied to the city, it becomes sewage, okay, so it is assuming here. So you can assume it. So assuming that 80% of water that is supplied to the city, it becomes sewage. So uh, they are finding the quantity of sewage to be treated per day. Okay. So how, how to find out the uh, quantity of sewage that, that is treated per day? It is your 0 0.8. Okay. How, how much of water it is becoming a sewage? So that multiplied by your MBD. Okay. So it becomes your 9.6 million liters. <clears throat> Clear? So now, <clears throat> now you have to assume a detention period. So since here no detention period is given, so uh, like uh, in the notes section you will get it, okay? That you, for the sedimentation tank, you have to assume a detention period of 2 hours, okay? So now you find out the capacity of the tank okay you find out the value of q it is your 9.6 that is your quantity of sewage divided by 24 okay into two hours okay multiplied by two two is your <coughs> hours right so it is multiply dividing it by 24 then you will get the answer in cubic meter that is your 800 cubic meter okay this part you solve it okay so now after you get the capacity of the tank okay after you get the capacity of the tank now you have to find out uh, since you need to design the uh, sedimentation tank that means you need the length breadth and width isn't it depth and width so first you find out the length so how to find out the length <coughs> it is velocity into retention period so previously we have already done the numericals yes so the formula is your velocity into retention period. So velocity also just now uh, it's 0 
okay it is assuming okay one more assume, assumption is there assumption is there it is 0 0.3 this one also you will get in the notes okay so the velocity the flow velocity here it is assumed to be 0 0.3 meter per minute okay and it is multiplied by detention period so what is the detention period it is 2 multiplied by 60 okay so now the cross sectional area of the tank required you find out the cross sectional area area the cross sectional area formula is what q by l okay so it is your capacity of the tank it is divided by the length of the tank so capacity just now we got it is your 800 okay this part 800 we already got and divided by the length length is your what 36 meter it is your coming to be 22.2 uh, meter square okay the cross-sectional area now uh, already uh, uh, this uh, water depth okay since here the water depth is not given and uh, there is no formula to find out the water depth so <clears throat> like the effective depth or the water depth it is already mentioned here in the uh, in the notes that if it is not given then you have to assume the water depth okay so there is a certain range and here they are assuming it to be three meter okay so uh, as soon as you go get you get the water depth so you have to find out the width okay the length you already got okay the water depth you have as assumed and now you can find out the width okay so what is the width formula it is your area divided by depth so area we already got it to be 22.2 and depth is your 3 okay <clears throat> so uh, after solving you get it to be 7.4 okay so <clears throat> It is written here that uh, since the tank is provided with mechanical cleaning arrangement, in the question itself, it is uh, mentioned that it is, uh, you know, like mechanical cleaning arrangement is provided. So that means there uh, is no need to provide any extra space for your sludge zone. Okay, so that's why uh, no extra uh, space is required at the bottom for the sludge zone. So now we can uh, directly uh, add it up with the free board okay we can add a free board so uh, like you got the theoretical uh, theoretical uh, depth value okay you have assumed that three meter and so now you have to add a free board along with your uh, effective depth of the tank okay so you get it to be they are taking the free board to be 0 0.5 and after adding it with the effective depth of the tank they get it to be 3.5 meter okay so now you have got all the dimensions like you have got the length you have got the width and you have got the depth okay so this is your uh, the design of your rectangular sedimentation tank <coughs> clear so now some more part is there so uh, here okay so now uh, like you have found out the length, width and uh, depth of the tank, okay. So now, uh, it, it, this, it is, okay, this is alternative, okay. This, I think this process is much easier than this. So there is another process also here. This one is short, but you can, uh, you, if you can do this process also or either you can do this process also, okay. It depends upon you. I have uh, explained you one process, okay. <coughs> Okay. <coughs> <coughs> okay. I need a little bit of break. Uh, uh, can we meet after um, ten fifteen or ten twenty? Okay. We will meet at 10, 15 or 10, 20. I will share you for the new link. <coughs> okay. Okay. Okay, you can leave this meeting, okay? <coughs> <coughs> 